Greetings, salutations everyone. Um, here we are in a lovely 2014 BMW X1. It's another installation of the Babsound video guide series. Um, and again, as always, we're doing our stage one speaker upgrade, which is where we effectively take all of the factory speakers out of the car, swoosh them away, upgrade them with our direct fit plug and play drivers, specific to your BMW. So it's a super straightforward, super fun, easy, effective process that we are going to get started with now. Um, very easy, we need two tools to extract each front door. We need our plastic panel removal tool, which is included in your Bav Sound kit. We need a Torx T20, also included in your Bav Sound kit. And I, um, I always have this little magnet because there's, these holes are kind of deep. I like to just you gotta sometimes extract the, the screws, but nevertheless, uh, let's get started. So, um, this guy here, it may be wood grain in your car, it may be Craben Fibre. Uh, in this case, we have aluminum. Uh, it could be diamond. It could be made out of Tyrannosaurus Rex eggs. Whatever it's fabricated from, we gotta remove it. And to do so, we use a plastic panel removal tool. We do not, under any circumstances, use metal anywhere near this panel. If I hear of that happening, well, woe is you, let's just say. Okay, come under here, look at that, there we go. So, let's start up here. This seems to work well, and this is a brand new car, so your car is gonna be very similar. Look at that. Look at that, one, two, these little clips, super nice. So if your car comes with Craben Fibre, or again, those dinosaur eggs and you want another color, it's super easy to swap out. Now that reveals one, two Torx T20s, both of which need removing. And to do that, you turn the screw to the left. Please note, if you just learned that right now by my saying so, that turning a screw to the left is how it's removed, please have this professionally done at your local BMW center. I found that usually one beer per area is, is enough to get the job done. So by the time you get to that right rear speaker, whew, it's a party, I tell you. Okay, these guys are out. We have one, two, three hiding behind this panel here, which is also adhered in the same fashion. So it's just a series of clips. This one I do know, we start back here. And you can see, I mean, that's from the factory. It's already got quite a bit of play. Um, you know. Look at that. Hell, I might be able to do it with my finger. Again, plastic. We do not use metal. If you use metal, I mean, you can use metal. It doesn't affect me one way or the other, but you will have pry marks all over your car, and it'll look like crap. And this top, top one is super tight. Like so. So you see a little tab right there, and then it's just clips. And again, look at that. Super simple. We've got the screw up here at the handle level. And again, I, I say this all the time. You get, you've got the gist. You really don't need to watch for the next minute or so while I extract these until we actually get to watching the door. Now you gotta kinda go fishing down in there until you find the screw. And again, these are tight, so don't don't think you're just going to spin them out of there. Be very direct in the extraction. Firm inward pressure while churning because otherwise you might roll it out and then you can't get the door off. Again, pretty darned unlikely, but you've been doing this for 20 years. You've seen it all.
So now we just basically, we need to extract this and it's just held on by plastic. A little clip here, like so. There's a couple of those. There's another one right back here. Let me close this. So again, we're just so that one was tight. So now we see we just we just pinch these little clips. They both they usually stay in the door, and those are just going to go on the little mail tabs here and here when we put this back together. So just remember to do that. Don't forget it. And now. We have access to the back of our tweeter, which is really easy to get off, like so. Now, as you can see, we have access to our tweeter. So you can see, this, this whole thing just clips on like so, so that's actually good you guys saw that. That's how we would reinstall it, so we just slide over. It's super easy to do this, but I'm glad it's off, so we'll show you. So the tweeter just pops right out. As you can see, bye bye harsh aluminum tweeter. And hello, silky smooth piece of jewelry. This is our 25 millimeter silk dome tweet. Um, yours again, most likely it's going to have a two pin connector right here and then there will be a capacitor harness that needs to go in line between the tweeter and the mid range. Make sure that's done prior to reinstallation. All right, so this guy snaps right back in where the factory tweeter came from. Like so. We put our foam right back where it came from. Like so. We come up, up here on the front. You can see, again, we just get that lined up, that lined up. this lined up. Don't forget, remember, we took these little guys off. Snaps it back on like so. You can see this is perfectly aligned back over here. You just took it around. We have our last little clip here. Snap him on like so. And the tweeter is installed. And as you can see, there's a beautiful aluminum ring that matches your gauges, your climate controls, your iDrive controller. I mean, it's, we've already done that side. I don't know if you can see it, but it's absolutely beautiful. It, it really highlights uh, the design of the tweeter and the car for that matter. So with that installed, again, let's kind of tuck this around. And just like the factory tweeter, it's going to plug right back into the mid-range. So let's pause here. Let's go to the workspace. Let's tackle the mid-range and the sound deadening and return for the reinstallation. All right, guys, so here we are up on our VUC bench. Uh, this is as complex as you think it is. It's removing three nuts, extracting the factory driver, <coughs> blessing the cameraman, and then reinstalling the BAV sound driver uh, in lieu of this factory harsh cannon. Why don't we call it that? Now, with regards to sound editing in this car, we send you ample sound deadening and in the X1, just focus it all on these front doors and I'll show you where. It's funny, we are running super short on time and to be honest, I don't have any sound deadening at the facility today because I had a big project earlier this week. Basically you would cut the sound deadening and adhere it all over this panel and all around here because we want to just control this resonance between the driver and the rest of the panel. So we've got multiple surfaces. So we want to take a uniform piece, maybe apply it here so that we bridge this gap between these two surfaces with one piece of sound deadening. Do the same thing all along here and then all through here. Obviously we don't want to cover up any holes, um, specifically you know, these guys up here, these two holes here and these three here. So we don't want to cover that hole up, um, but that's it. That's where the sound deadening will go. So use half of it on the, front, the left front door, half of it on the right front door. Um, and you will have beautifully, brilliantly dead panels for maximum mid-bass performance. So, with the factory driver out, we take our driver and, as you guessed, we just drop it down like so. And she is situated. 
uh, with regards to putting this back on, so that just that whole star pattern thing. So you know, you get get one started, get it kind of snug, and just work your way around. Don't just wrench one down and then kind of go do another one. Just give everybody a chance to come to the party. Even that weird guy at work. Everybody's got a Milton at work, right? Yeah. He might, he's not here. You're in the peacefulness of your garage. All right, so snugged up. We've got our sound deadening applied. Obviously we don't. Uh, so at this point, um, what we're gonna do, we're gonna pop off our boot from the ferrite motor structure. Um, this has no acoustical uh, bearing whatsoever, so uh, it's just for aesthetic. Uh, and quite frankly, it's just the way we've been making speakers for 20 years, so um, some of the newer ones might not have this because we're trying to minimize waste. So just take it off, use it as a koozie. Uh, you can play ring toss with it. Uh, you could try to eat it, I suppose. Uh, so let's move back over to the car and uh, get rocking and rolling. All right, party people. So as you can see, that took all of a couple of minutes to do this whole thing. Um, so again, when we reinstall this, make sure the handle is closed. So close it, latch it, snap it down. Make sure that it didn't slip out of here. There's a little channel here, so sometimes this can slip out and then you put the door panel on and it doesn't work. Well, that would be why. Uh, so now we will plug our windows back in, which in and of itself is super easy. Snap, we slide this guy back in, he just slides in here. Can you guys see this at all? Yes, it just snaps right in. So it pulls out, snaps in, it's real, it's real easy. Um, then we plug in our mid-range and tweeter, like so. Plug in our mid-range. Plug in our tweeter. And we are good to go. So, with all of that said, we can now take our door lock mechanism back in the hole like that. And what I like to do is I get the top situated first. It just naturally wants to sit up there and I just do that. And now I sit down and I kind of lift up a little bit and you'll feel all the little tabs align themselves before you push in. You'll just feel it happen. And then, yep. and then using, the, using your hand, we're good as new. One, two, three, four, five. Put everything back in and we are good to go. So, I mean, there's really not a lot of sense I don't think in watching this, you can if you are so inclined. We're gonna do it anyway. Um, but we are gonna take you over to the driver's door. Don't forget, as we mentioned earlier, I'm gonna show you a little trick to removing the window control switch because on the driver's side, we've gotta take this little switch out. Whereas on this one, we could access the plug on the back side without even needing to remove the panel. However, on that driver's side, we need to do something a little trickier. Um, it's, it's easy, but it's just, it, it's required and you guys need to know about it. Because otherwise, you're going to be calling us on Saturday. And if you did that door last, you'll be calling us on your fourth beer. And I don't want to talk to you after your fourth beer. I'm not going to lie. I don't. One or two, you know, there'll be some jokes. Ha ha. Four beers. You're either going to be really angry or a little too happy. As I was mentioning, everything on the driver's door is the same except one little tidbit. And that is the way this switch or this clip rather works. So we, there's a little button here, we depress it, and then we fold this back, and that extracts the plug from the connector. There's a second thing you also need to be aware of, which is this clip here. So this sits down in there like so. And it's got little clips on the front and the back, or on the inside and the outside. Those are, those are just kind of stabilizer clips, whereas this plastic clip here is what's really holding this thing in on the front. So we have to depress this tab from the back side. So when we have the door off, there's a little hole and you can see it right here. There's a little hole right there. And you'll see this clip when you look through the hole from the back side. So basically we are depressing this tab from the back side and with our angle pick that's included in your Bav Sound toolkit, we depress this tab and lift up. And then from the front side of the door panel, we pop this out and unplug it and go about our merry way. So we did want you guys to be aware of that. So again, I'll show you how this plug works 
And then when you can actually see it actually being snapped back in place, snap like so. We just get this situated down in there and voila. So it's really straightforward. I wanted you guys to see that. So, all right, cool. Let's uh, let's do uh, let's get to that beer I was talking about earlier, and then let's uh, let's do some tuning. Actually, you know what? It might, we might as well show you how we put all these pieces back on because maybe you've forgotten by now. Maybe you are on your fourth beer. Maybe you're on your sixth. I don't know. Maybe you live in Colorado or Washington, and you don't even know where you are right now. So we'll show you. We'll just remind you. <laughs> All right. So this one's pretty simple. Round hole square peg. And same for this guy here. Just a little alignment. And just voila. Check it out. Uh, it really is perfect. They did a great job building this car. I'm, I'm very impressed. So um, at this point, we're going to pause, have a beer, uh, maybe eat some food, and then we're going to start in the back upgrading the rear speakers in the hatch area. We're going to put a flat screen TV here in the hatch um, along with a uh, crystal ball, a chandelier, uh, all back here. Um, <laughs> so here's what we're doing. Um, effectively, um, the rear end of the car comes out. Um, that sounds daunting. I get it. Uh, truth be told, after you watch me do it, it's it's three minutes to get each side out, um, real time. So it's really straightforward. Um, watch me before you attempt to do it. Um, we've already done this side, so we're going to go and do the passenger side over here. So, um, but we're going to talk a little bit about something that I've already done, which is popping out this piece of trim, and to do so. First and foremost, we've got a Torx T25 here and here. So it's, you know, it's down like that. And then inside of these guys, there's a couple little tie downs, which again is a uh, Torx T30, just like the guys up there in the front. So um, all those tools come in the Bath Sound kit uh, that you hopefully ordered with your stage one. If you are a professional doing this, uh, well, you'll have those tools. So um, we remove those, lift up, and like so, and you see we've got one, two, three, and four tabs. Pick that up. Let's place it aside. Alrighty, so first things first, let's uh, clean out all the trash from our car. And then we've got these little tubs. There's one on either side. We just use our fingers. We just pop this guy out of there like so. And he just lifts out. And again, just put everything off to the side. And now using our panel removal tool, so there's a panel removal tool in your bath sound kit. You want to use the metal one with the forked teeth. There's a little guy back here and I'm going to show you how I do this. It's hard to see from where you are, but I will. It's, it's always hard to show that. So basically, let's see back here. So it's just a little, little tab like so. We slide this part out with our forked tool and it pops out like so. So we have one right here, and then there's one up here. Now you can, actually that's perfect because you can see how it works. Then we have one more. And to access that, we folded our seat down, and we need to just pop out this leather cushion. And so to do that, just using our hands, get back here and just one, two, three, pop. Lift up, and there's one more back here that you can't it's the same as those guys up there. So again, we've got three of those. And then inside of here, there's a little white tab that attaches to this guy here. So you can see that. So there's just a little tab in here. You just depress it down with your thumb and pull out. And this just reattaches to this, like so. BMW's been doing it like this for, geez, 20 years at this point. Like that, and it's ready to snap right back in when we're done. Let's do this methodically. Let's do the carpet first, and um, let's keep it rolling. And again, mind you, this is, you know, I'm having to talk you through it, and the real actual time is just a few minutes. But we don't like to edit it down. We want you to actually see what's going on, and you know, so you can experience it. I mean, we could 
pare this down and make it look as easy as we wanted. But we think it's very important that you actually see what's involved before you decide if you want to do it yourself. Of course, a professional, you know, can do this effortlessly. It's what we do. So now this panel's loose, as you can see. Yeah, so now we now take this panel and we just pull it out like so and down. And it just kind of snaps up in there like so. So, and out like that, we take this guy, put him back up in there, put it back up in there, this really cool little design to keep the carpets up. So you guys are seeing what I'm doing here, so that when you reinstall it, you can have an easy time of doing this. All right, cool. So, we'll unplug, in this side, we unplug the power outlet, on the other side, we undo the light. So we'll get that out of the way. And now that's gonna reveal a couple of eight millimeter bolts, which again, I'm using a big socket wrench because this is just, when you've been doing this 20 years, you do what you do. But then eight millimeter is included in your bath sound toolkit. So we got a couple of those guys down here. And now there are two more behind here. So this little panel pops out. And to do that, again, you just come up here. Just use your fingers because why not? Where is this little guy? There's a tab up here. There he is. Pop it out like so. The tab is actually down here. We come up front. Same thing. Get our fingers up here. And there's one tab up here. Out she pops, up that lifts, just like so, and voila, exposing our other two 8mm bolts. It feels kind of weird doing this to a car that has 50 miles on it. <laughs> but again, at the end of the day, it's about a super easy, super effective speaker upgrade. So all these guys are out. Now we, there's a little tab back here you can actually see. We lift up on that. Um, taking our pan, metal panel removal tool, there's a little tab under here. So we just want to take that guy. Okay. All right guys, so now that we've, we've got all the eight millimeters out, we are ready to free up our panel. And to do so, we lift up now we can slot the seat belt out of here. When I say that, it's, it's really simple. But when you are, when you have bad lighting, and you're... We are freed up. Come back here, just lift up. We've got a little clip back here, the little white clip there. Unplug our speaker and bam, we're going to take it over to our workspace, replace our mid-range, replace our tweeter, and obviously reinstall this. So let's pause it here and join you guys on the workspace. All right, guys, so this is a super straightforward process. So with our X1, we've got each of our rear side panels up here. The mid-range is attached just using a couple of Torx T20s. And again, this bit is in your Bavsound toolkit. Uh, you can see this is super entertaining to watch. I was thinking about telling some jokes uh, while I do this to entertain you because then I don't really know any jokes. Alright, so easy enough. Undone, right? The tweeter, just a couple of little tabs. You can just see down in here, just a little one, two, three, four. Just secure the tweeter in there. So I just take the angle pick, again that's in our bath sound kit. And I just go in there and just pry it out. Like that. Yep. So we take out the factory drivers, put in our Bav Sound drivers, and we rock out effortlessly. So again, Bav Sound driver just drops right down. 
Yeah, it was fun. Being innovative is, it's a treat, being the first. And I don't know about you guys, but I've got some Lionel Richie stuck in my head. Specifically, Penny Lover. Those of you under the age of 50, look it up. It's a great song. For those of you that are balding, you should know that song. All right, so the tweeter snaps right in. Actually, better than the factory tweeter did. It's a much more snug fit. It's hard to show you guys that, but just rest assured it snaps right in there. So, so tweeter snaps in. And we then plug the tweeter. Now, depends on when this kit ships. You may actually be clipping in an inline filter. So it's important to make sure that there is a harness with a little capacitor between the mid-range and the tweeter. So it, again, it all depends on when yours is shipping. Um, clip them together and then this plugs back into the factory connector and we are done. So again, don't, uh, don't think you can pop this grill out. We don't recommend removing this grill. Uh, it's just a lot of work to put it back in. If you want to take it out to look at your new speakers, you can, but you've already seen them. Um, leave this be because it's fastened, as you can see, down here on the bottom. And believe you me, that's not something we want to mess with. So with that done, let's take this back over to the car, get it reinstalled, and move on uh, and enjoy the stage one. When we're reinstalling our panel back here, the, the, the two things we need to be conscientious of are this little platform here where this guy adheres and this hole here where this tab adheres. Everything else we can kind of finagle. So let's first kind of get our seat belt situated up here in the front. Easy, right? Then we come on back here and start looking at situating everything else. And so trying to, it's, it's a little bit more difficult for me because I'm trying to stay out of you guys' way. camera specifically. There we go. You can see what I'm kind of doing with that as well. Snap down like so. Voila. And now we are free to reattach the eight millimeter bolts we removed earlier. And again, Answer some emails, take a phone call, go to lunch. So, with this guy, we've got this attached, seat belt situated, snap this guy back on. So just again, you're just putting a puzzle together. Just be conscientious back here when you're doing this because you don't want to, we don't want to break these little clips. So you, you've got to be very kind of alert as far as what you're doing here. So you want to make sure it's lined up that you are in the groove that you need to be in. It's hard to, because otherwise you just break these little clips, which in and of itself isn't horrible. It's just, it's the most annoying thing you'll ever deal with. Right. So if you were to break one of these little tabs, they're like a buck at the dealer. And the dealer keeps them in stock because their very own techs routinely, you know, none of us are perfect. Sometimes you break a clip. Guess what? It's all right. There we go. There we go. All right. So we just line these little guys up and then I just, like so, push it in. And you just want to make sure this all stays tucked. The best thing to do is, when, you know, do one side at a time. And the stock, the side that you did, you do first, just go look at the other side before you start manipulating the panels and such so that you understand you know what it should look like but again it's just putting a puzzle together it's just a puzzle for adults like I said you gotta line all this up we're good there okay. you can see there we are Perfecto. So again, 
That panel's all snapped in. Now we just finagle the carpet back up in here and we're done. I think my three minute earlier, I think that's probably a bit of a stretch. I'd say total time extraction and removal is probably 15 minutes per side. We've got their panel situated, everything is rock solid. We've got our speaker plugged in. You did remember to do that, yes? Um, and so now we'll go ahead and put our carpet panel back in. And remember these little tabs we mentioned earlier that came out, we just situate them back up where they belong. Um, make sure that they are positioned exactly like this so that the tab is up in there. And then you really, it's just a little finagling. You know, you plug in your cigarette, you plug in your power outlet on this side, your light on the other side. I don't know anyone that has ever, ever in a million years plugged anything in back here, but hey. It's a selling point, I suppose. Okay. So now, just a little bit of this. Move this guy out of the way. Leave that foam gone. Then, we just kind of tuck. All right, so I'm gonna get there eventually. All right, so we got these guys situated. Tab, you hear them snapping? That's good news. Snap, you guys hear that? It situates itself. Look at that. Holes line up perfectly from where we removed this guy. Reinstall that. Don't forget this guy up here in the front. Reinstall that. We've got our panel in the back. And back here, we wanna check for alignment of the carpet. Again, under. Yeah, we got this one little wonky tab here. He didn't want to play, so we got to make him play. And bam, it's like that. Right here. Put that tab back in place. We are perfectly situated along this back edge, like so. Yep, there we go, we get that situated. We take our little tub, drop it right back in as follows, like that. And then all we have left to do, reinstall our, this little guy up here. So you guys see the little tab here. There's a trick here, there's a female receptacle up in here. Make sure you get that latched. Perfect. So we get that situated, we have this guy, which is our Torx T30. Again, nice and snug. Then we take our little back seat cushion here. There's just a little tab here that we want to align. Back here, there's a slot over here, you can't miss it. it slots right in like so. That's situated. Right in. We have this little piece here, which finishes off the job. Just get this situated in there, that situated in there. That is one way to do it, I suppose, eh? And then we are ready to rock and roll. So the hard work is done. We basically put the truck back together at this point. We can take our floor, reassemble it. We obviously need to put in the cover here again, but that's just those four screws. We're just not gonna cover that. It's just putting four screws in and you can absolutely do that. So um, at that point, we are done with the Sage One. So why don't we pause here? Uh, I'm gonna have a beer. You guys probably should do the same. Uh, and then we will head up to the front, talk a little bit about tuning and uh, take a listen to the final uh, upgrade. All right guys, so we've completed the stage one here in our X1. And again, this is one of the Harman Kardon cars, but um, yours is gonna be very similar, especially here if you're in the States. Uh, the only difference will be you won't have this uh, center channel. Um, the upgrade is, is simply brilliant. I mean, it's it's the presence that was not there before. The mid-range is, is high in the dash, high center. Um, the distortion is gone. There's actually a marked improvement in the sub-bass performance in that the mid-ranges are no longer clipping, therefore feeding back into the amplifier and causing just generic, um, quite frankly, just underperformance of this amplifier. It's, it's quite dynamic and you'll immediately hear it. Um, the first thing you really want to be aware of in all of these cars, Harman Kardon or otherwise, um, bass and 
trouble, especially now with these new tweeters. They're, everything here is was tuned and designed basically on a flat EQ curve. Um, that's because we let the drivers themselves do the work through the design of the of the cones and the domes of the mids and tweets. So um, I mean, you can you can play with it, but within reason. I mean, you know, you don't want to jack the bass wide open and. Uh, Unless you're 80 years old and you know you can't hear over 5,000 hertz or 2,000 hertz, you're gonna come do that. Um, but again, pretty flat. And then this Logic 7 surround setting, just turn it off. It, it's all kinds of digital compression. Um, in and of itself, just corrupts the sound. So turn it off. Um, do yourself a favor. Uh, volume settings, speed volume all the way down. Do that in all cars, speed volume down, because what happens is as the speed increases, as the engine RPM increases rather, the system artificially pulls bass and lower mid-range out of the speakers to prevent, in its mind, distortion. <coughs> That's no longer an issue with our speakers. <coughs> Excuse me, my goodness. That was probably really loud in your ear. EQ. You see, I've got it flat down. Um, again, if you're in your 50s, 60s, maybe you want to boost this 10K a little bit. Um, for the rest of it, us, again, this largely should be flat. Um, if, if you're hearing a little distortion in the low end uh, with certain tracks, you know, come up into the 100 hertz, bump it down a notch or two. But by and large, um, our mid ranges kick in, you know, just below this five, in this range between two and 500 hertz. So uh, let them do their thing. Let it be flat, let the signal be uncompressed, and let them jam. Um, and that's kind of the settings. I mean, there's really nothing more to it. Just uh, you can go wide open at this point, there's no distortion. I mean, up until the very, very, very top end of things, when quite frankly, uh, you're going deaf at that point if you're listening to it so loud. So um, again, we can't thank you enough. Uh, enjoy the stage one, uh, enjoy your BMW. Check us out anytime, bavsound.com, Facebook. We do all that stuff. You know, we're in the internet sphere of sorts. So uh, tweet us, uh, Facebook us, uh, Instagram us. I don't know how that stuff works. You guys probably do. I, I you don't know I'm talking for that stuff, but uh, have fun with it. Most importantly, that's that's why we do this. It's for the love of music and the love of our cars. So check you guys soon. Be well. Have a beer for me.